Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we'd uh, like to thank you for joining this uh, NWR hosted webinar with ASX listed prospect. Uh, the ticker there is PRS. Just some uh, comments on admin. It'll be a 20 minute overview of some slides from the company followed by a 10 minute Q&A. Um, so we'll look to wrap up in about 30 minutes. The Q&A is the chat function on Zoom. So if at any point during the presentation, you think of a question, just type it in and I'll get to uh, ask uh, Jason at, at the end. So on the call, we do have uh, Jason Beckton, uh, MD of uh, European Critical Minerals Focused uh, Prospect. Uh, Jason is actually calling in um, from Slovakia, uh, where it's meant to be great internet, so we shouldn't have a problem, uh, where he's uh, overworking uh, on the exciting suite of licenses they've built up over there with the uh, experienced team that they have on the ground. Uh, Jason's going to provide us uh, an update on PRS uh, post the uh, exciting acquisition they announced uh, in Finland focused on, on rare earths and lithium. Uh, this goes along with the seven uh, projects they also have in Slovakia, including the recent acquisition of Kolba, a very exciting uh, looking, uh, looking copper, cobalt and, and nickel license as well. So um, uh, it's been a very active period for the team. So Jason's done a great job and it's not going to stop here. It looks like it's going to be an extremely busy uh, year ahead uh, for you as well, Jason. So looking forward to your overview and uh, getting to ask some good questions at the end. All right. Thanks, Aidan and NWR. Obviously, we look forward to uh, presenting what has been a, a many years in the making, this this uh, suite of assets, and um, we'll go through it one by one. There's a um, Basically, uh, the overall message is it is a transition for the company. Um, and there are some forward-looking statements because of the nature of the entity. We're an exploration group. So just to... Um, capitalize, I guess, on the current um, situation. We have um, four years ago started a search of assets in Finland, and that's culminated in the recent deal with PR Prospect and Bambra OY. Uh, we'll talk about that shortly. Uh, we have a heritage here of five years operations in, in the EU in Slovakia. Um, and we'll talk about the uh, benefits of Slovakia plus Finland shortly. Um, drill wise, which is the key to value, we know um, we're shortly uh, in the field. In fact, tomorrow I'm in the field in Colba to finally check um, the carefully planned program of drilling a shear zone of uh, copper, cobalt, uh, silver, nickel uh, at Colba. Um, another project we've been following and finally um, secured uh, after five years. And we'll also talk about um, the equity markets here in Europe and the recent uh, legislative changes for the for the better. Um, the capital structure is um, as a result of our drilling efforts in the last four years, we haven't frankly had a breakthrough success. We do have a large suite of gold silver assets, Epithermal, which has been our wheelhouse in the past uh, since Palmario days. So we do like those types of assets. They do require a lot of drilling, however, and um, we've, we've been drilling at a rate that we need to increase. And um, that that's um, combined with the recent um, encouragement of picking up critical elements. We do see a transition for the company um, to pick this uh, market cap back up from its current low base in our view. Um, the board and management, There's uh, this is a, a group that I've worked with on and off since 2004 in Mexico, as I alluded to earlier. Um, there's Thomas Mann, our chairman in Sydney, and Peter Nightingale, uh, long association with the, the MISCORP group, and they're uh, the sort of backbone, if you like, of the administration, as long, along with Richard Edwards, our very capable company secretary, who we share with much larger groups. And then there's uh, John Levings, who came in by dint of one of our largest shareholders, the Saleem Group, who's an excellent um, geologist, famous discovery geologist from Tennant Creek. And Steve Gemmel, who's a very uh, precise uh, mining engineer and makes sure we're um, picking up all the data and getting it in a format that's correct for the ASX. So just to, to cap on the two jurisdictions we operate in, which is not unusual for junior explorers to allay risk, we have, we have two jurisdictions now, not one. Uh, the topical one, of course, is Finland, where we've just been working um, for the past year or so on a transaction that makes sense for PRS shareholders. 
uh, and it includes uh, two brownfields projects in Jockey Kangas and Korsnas, um, which are being drilled over 80 drill holes in each one. We're currently uh, preparing which holes that we're going to be relogging and sampling in, in April at the Loppy facility in Finland. And Sarankala uh, Lithium uh, Project, which is a, um, picked up on open ground in, in one of the 19 defined uh, lithium cesium tantalum tracks that's defined by the government. So we're, we're just working off the, the good work of the government there. That does need traditional sampling and mapping, um, but it is a uh, lithium rich um, uh, belt of pegmatites. So we're fairly excited about that, we're just arranging land access at the moment. Um, then there's the Kolba property in Slovakia, which we, as I said, I'm in the field tomorrow on. And that that is a drill job. It's already been sampled. It's already had um, previous geophysics taken on it. And we, we've released some of those high grade results in the past few months, uh, which are compelling. Um, one pleasant surprise was the silver levels, which were never discussed by previous operators being the government. And we think it's a robust uh, elongate uh, thick target. Um, and importantly, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the technical side of it. We're not focusing on the vein materials on the edges. It's a thick shear zone. Um, then there's, of course, the heritage of the company, the, the six gold silver projects. Some of those are subject to review. Uh, we have encouragement um, near the operating mine at Hadrusha, which we'll um, refer to briefly, uh, but also uh, Zemplin in the east. And we also like um, um, Yasini in the north, which is a critical element project as well. So as you probably discerned, um, the, there is a project suite that competes for, for dollars at the moment. Um, first, Colba will be drilled. It's the most compelling target because of the high grades and thicknesses, trying to keep things simple. Um, when it comes to Bambra, where we don't expect to drill in the medium term, we first we're gonna resample all the old core and we're liaising with people who have done that in the past or done, you know, we're collating data at the moment, including a PhD recently on our Jockey Kangas project. And we, that will again result in what effectively are drill intercepts into the market. Um, then there's, of course, the precious metal assets that I referred to earlier. Um, of course, we don't expose shareholders to difficult jurisdictions, given that exploration is already a risky um, undertaking. So within the EU, just like you would within Australia, you select your pro-mining or pro-exploration jurisdictions. Certainly everyone knows about Finland, but Slovakia is also a foreign direct investment um, and EU, EEC. Um, jurisdiction. So we like it here. We've been here for five years without incident, significant incident. Um, news flow we'll talk about shortly. There's definitely um, drill results to come out uh, in the current uh, reporting period next quarter. And the management team, of course, we've been careful over the last five or six years to curate that and uh, make sure we have people who know what they're doing here. And it's expat light. So there's, there's good people here in Europe. You don't need to have an expensive team. Uh, topically, and I saw this at PDAC in Canada a few weeks ago, the, the EU government is, uh, or as a group of governments, is trying to keep up and catch up with the um, legislation coming out of the United States in terms of subsidies for explorers, developers, processes. Uh, obviously, we're interested in one end of that, the explorer side. And when it comes to us to cut through all the government paperwork, what we're really interested in is ease of permitting. And what, what you can see is that we um, uh, have well, what, you, what you will see, and it is an intangible, is that we're talking to EU governments, mainly Slovakia, Finland, of course, but the EU itself, um, to make sure that they're aware of us early stage R&D stage companies are not um, uh, left out of the, the pie, as it were, compared to the processing uh, entities which have been here for a long time. So there has been a bit of a shift there. It's been, they've been talking about it since 2012, uh, making the EU a better place to explore, but this is, this is now really being linked to subsidies. So that's what catches the attention of federal and more importantly, in fact, local governments. So we think it's worth remaining engaged on that side of things, but I won't labor it because the best way to value is of course, drill results. Uh, Finland, we've covered this largely. I think most people are across the fact that um, large foreign entities, including 
the largest companies now uh, are in Finland. Um, uh, for example, Kitala Mine, they're spending for uh, Agnico Eagle are spending over $4 billion building that in northern Lapland at the moment. So foreign direct capital is pour pouring into Finland. Um, what we what we know about Finland as well is it has an excellent um, free government database with surprisingly open uh, projects. Obviously, they're not um, resources or reserves, but we are building that towards that goal, uh, particularly at Jockey Kangas, which I'm working on at the moment. And topically, we got some advice yesterday on which holes to select for, for sampling in April. So that's, uh, as usual, the harder you work on something, the, the, the easier it gets. Uh, but what I like about Jockey Kangas is that it's also adjacent to a, um, a new mine that's being developed, a vanadium ilmenite tailings uh, reprocessing facility at Ottenmarki. So it is a primary industry area already. Uh, Korsnas is a, a formerly mined area. We'll talk about that at the moment, the, the upside that remains there, particularly with respect to a tailings dam, which is topical. And Serenkula, I referred to earlier, needs standard mapping sampling to um, pour more detail into the what are grossly uh, sort of identified pegmatite zones, but we need more information before we make um, drill decision points. Um, Jockey Kangas, as I referred to, is a rare earth project, which, um, in fact, if you look at the image on the right, we surround two non-Jork resources at Kataja Kangas and Contiaho. Um, we know that those high grades lead onto our ground. We're just getting it into 3D at the moment. And aside from that, we will be resampling those holes that were drilled by others um, up into and including 2011. So for me, this is a brownfields job. We just need to sample those 20 odd holes and, and get on with it and um, start drill permitting and obviously advance the, the tenement to being fully granted and drillable. You can see here some of the more detail, uh, uh, there's some gray exclusion zones with houses, they can be negotiated. The blue area is topical, that's a third party that are developing the vanadium mine to the extreme bottom right, where you can see a lot of green dots. The green dots are government drill holes that are in their archive down near Helsinki at Loppy, and we can select some of those for resampling, which we're doing at the moment. Um, and I hope to send that over the weekend to the to our friends at that facility to get the core ready. So long story short, drill results from Jockey Kangas, but we didn't drill the holes in the in the near term. Uh, Korsnas, uh, again, same job. We'll also be resampling holes from Korsnas. We're just selecting which one's there as well. John Levings is helping me with that. Uh, importantly, uh, this was a mine um, for lead. And of course, the geologists and engineers were astute enough to recognise they had rare earths in amongst the lead, and they did some pilot test work before production ceased. So there's, in fact, unmined lenses uh, that run to the north from that mine where we are. And uh, we, we believe that there is potential, we have to um, get it exactly right in 3D, there's potential for up to 20, 20 metre wide carb carbonatite uh, zones, veins is probably not the right word, but dikes. And we think, um, yeah, there's wide open uh, opportunity here because it was a brownfield site, but it was focused on, on lead production. So there's also the, the broken dirt at the tailing stand that we're going to evaluate in 3D once we get hold of the um, uh, topographical information to get some volumes. So again, Brownfield's job without being too much technical jargon. Um, Serenkula, Finland, as I said, it needs uh, standard sampling mapping. We're getting the tablets set up for that. Uh, we hope the snow is low enough. I believe it will be uh, in mid-April to, to start that recon work. And so that the news flow out of that will be rock chips more than anything. And we obviously have a settled area, so we can't sample every square metre, but we're looking at the ridge tops and the outcropped areas to start with. And we have some good information from the government on where to go. Uh, the, the entire belt, as you can see, the, the uh, lighter red colour, we haven't pegged. There's other competitors to the south, but it does remain open to the north. And I would stress there's other uh, lithium cesium tracts that we're looking at elsewhere in Finland on open ground. Uh, Slovakia is where we're where I am at the moment because that's the next drill job and we we again the um, I'll take the information on the jurisdiction as red 
but it's basically a pro mining jurisdiction. And in fact, we surround current modern gold production here at the Rosalia mine at Banks Castillo of Nitsa, which is our only EU office at the moment. Given that our people can work in Finland, there's no need to duplicate there. It's like moving between New South Wales and Victoria, et cetera. Um, there's some background geology. We are part of a belt that is um, gathering the attention of large companies, particularly to our south in the Tethian belt, um, such as Dundee, et cetera. Uh, Freeport. So we, we think uh, this is a good place to be for larger gold systems um, and silver, and also some antimony that we've been working on and tungsten at Yasni. So I won't labour this one too much, because, but it is certainly a very active belt. And I attended the, the Western Tethian Day um, and PDAC on March 6th. So it's, it's well, it's very topical right now for a lot of foreign investment. Uh, in our case, we're focusing as the central project there at Colba. Um, what this is, is a result of um, collating the old information, including uh, free LIDAR topographical information from the forestry people. So a very permissive environment to work. We've done some modern geochemical sampling. You can see the grades there on the left. I like to see grades of copper over 1% and silver over 100 grams per tonne. And we've got both of those. And then co cobalt, I think, becomes interesting over 1,000 ppm. Uh, in terms of what we see in resource outcomes in Australia, for example. So this is importantly, not just sampling veins, this is probably a shear zone. We need to prove that with drilling and we're, we're arranging some point blank drill holes into that shear zone at the moment, 12, 12 pads in all, we'll probably drill six to start with and maybe move to 12 depending on results. So it's low tech, but we have benefited again from a lot of the work from others and we've done some sampling ourselves just to confirm the grades. Uh, keep an eye on the cobalt, silver, copper numbers. Nickel, I think, is um, important, but an accessory. Uh, we are looking at expanding the licence northeast, southwest at the moment. So that paperwork's underway, um, basically, so we can dominate the belt. Um, in terms of news flow, we look at um, the outcomes I spoke about earlier. The, there is some uh, flexibility on labs, et cetera, but look for drill, drill results from Colba resampling results from Finland in summary. And there's some um, overall propaganda, but my, my view is, is I, I look for two things on my personal account. One is quality of the asset, but two is what, can you go all the way to mining? And certainly that is the case in these two jurisdictions. All right, and there's some appendices there, which I encourage people to go through at their leisure. Uh, Aidan, I might kick back to you. Great, Jason. Great run through and, and pretty much spot on time. So thanks for that. Yeah, sort of uh, just remind people um, there is the chat function on Zoom. So just uh, type in your question and over the next 10 minutes, we'll get to them. So uh, a couple of questions that we fielded um, even before the call around um, relatively small company, but good management team. But how, how are you going to manage 10 assets from the perspective of you know, competing for capital, management time, um, and then how do you just see the the sort of the, the the crystallization of value of those assets going forward? Are you, you going to keep at one hundred percent joint ventures, or is everything on the table? So I, I guess the questions have been around how how do how do you manage um, what is now quite an extensive portfolio of licenses? That's a good question, and I guess the analogy is um, like a family. People say they haven't got a favourite kid, but you do have a favourite kid. And uh, my, my, it's an internal competition. And I think that, um, for example, one project, one gold silver project, we're actually looking at um, dropping. One, a few projects are looking at JVing, but basically, I, I think there should be, um, and it's a, it's a good question. I think that six projects is about the speculative. Um, correct balance, as I've seen with other much larger companies and um, overall investment philosophy. So look for some streamlining in the near term. Uh, however, at the moment, we are in a, in a place where we've done some good work on all of those projects. So we'll try to maximise value for shareholders. Uh, there, there's no doubt that um, our team will keep small for a while until we're post-resource success. Importantly, uh, in terms of operating in these two jurisdictions where there's other projects, projects are spread, 
our people can work in either jurisdiction, uh, vice versa. Uh, we have a turnkey team available in Finland, an accountant and a landman who's on, on secondment from another company. And so we we can move people around depending on the, on the um, focus. But I, I understand the question. Sydney's been quite disciplined. Sydney head office when I come with submittals, because obviously, because we know what we're doing with projects, we get a lot of project submittals. And these projects that we have have been carefully curated over a long time. And um, so, yeah, I think the finished transaction, people might think it was opportunistic or whatever, but it's basically been a four-year effort to convince the balance of the board of PRS that these, these ones can compete with the value that we have in Slovakia. And in that competition, sometimes you do have projects that are peripheral and they should be, you know, they should be, you should maximise value. But without rambling on, there will be some further um, iterative, I guess, uh, filtering, Aidan. Over to you. Thanks, Jason. Uh, actually, just looking at the questions here, I think you've actually touched on two in, in your answer there. In terms of these European jurisdictions, um, I think in the presentation and, and in that last answer, you know, you, you talked about how regulatory and environmental issues were, were manageable um, for people that may not know Slovakia and Finland. A anything else, if you sort of compare and contrast it to, to local, local um, jurisdictions in terms of tax, the cost of doing business, local landowner issues, NIMBY issues, what, what's what's positive and negative um, in those two jurisdictions versus perhaps some more close to home that people understand better? So I guess I'd equate operating in Finland a little like Western Tasmania, where I've worked at the Henty Mine, in that you have settled areas, but then you have vast areas of um, wilderness, which is carefully monitored by the government. So Finland certainly, like Slovakia, you do have certain areas. We don't have any in our tenements, but you do have what's called Natura 2000 uh, areas, which are carefully uh, monitored by the government. That doesn't preclude exploration work. Um, so I compare Finland to that to some extent with lower topography. Uh, you have to be careful with water and with locals and with in interaction. First world jurisdiction, as, as is Slovakia. Slovakia, I'd compare more with where I've worked in the past around the Gimpy mine, uh, perhaps, uh, or Ballarat Bendigo, where you have a slightly higher density um, settlements, but you also have vast areas of primary production in terms of forestry and logging. So one of the key um, attributes that we looked at before we signed on to the Slovakian asset in 2015 was um, who are the landlord of where you're drilling? And generally, it's the forestry department who are primary in primary production, still logging in these black forests of Slovakia in a very sustainable way, professional way. And so they generally, if we when we select a drill site in 3D, they will clean the road, their own road for us at cost, obviously. So that that would be my analogy. Um, um, it's both manageable and um, obviously it's also because there's been a millennia of work done, particularly here in Slovakia, there's always a drill road and that's been assisted actually lately. If I can just go back to a slide here at Kolba, that's been assisted by the recent free LIDAR information, which is the ultra detailed laser topography that does illuminate all the old tracks, which we were of course allowed to clean. And therefore there's always a drill pad. So operating in this jurisdiction just requires um, planning ahead for permitting. Generally, to drill in Slovakia, it's uh, between zero and 10 weeks um, to get your permit, which is very fast. I don't think Australia has any jurisdiction like that. Uh, whereas Finland is a bit of a longer process. It's more like 12 weeks to get a drill permit while, once your tenement's approved. So, yeah, both, both commercial. Um, so the actual overriding motherhood statements that these are pro mining is is backed up by what how i gauge it which is timed from idea to drill and the permitting piece in between Back right reassuring yeah a couple of questions around funding what is your you know current or, or funding position how adequate is that for the work program so how restrictive do you have to be um and then you know, what is the cost of, of sort of running the business, uh, holding 
the ten licenses and 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 overhead um, before you you actually start thinking about drilling. So we've um, got a monthly cash burn, which is approximately sixty five thousand dollars. So it's reasonably modest. Um, that's across the company. Uh, we have. Um, Rentals are very benign, particularly in Slovakia, and because of the early stage of the life of the tenements in Finland, um, our budget um, in terms of funding, we, we, we believe current funding mechanisms, which is a separate release, should see us continuously drilling with at least one rig um, through to uh, the end of 2024. Uh, we, we can't see any um, need to increase that funding or that drill rate, of course, discovery related. Um, and we don't have a high expat cost. Uh, There's just myself and John Levings in the field here uh, because of the depth of the expertise base here. So that's why the cash burn is quite modest. Obviously, we're very careful given the company's size about where we drill, but there's also a bank of 110 planned drill holes on the gold assets, including Pukanech, which is ready to go, uh, which has um, got over 800 working. So we, bottom line is we do put time into being careful with shareholders' money on the drilling, and that, that means that drilling probably could be increased in its rate. Um, but at the moment, we've got enough to to test all the current uh, target list through the end of uh, next year. Great, thanks, Jason. Just going back to Finland, you mentioned the four-year effort um, to, to get it as part of the, the portfolio, perhaps provide a bit more color on that and, and Bambra, um, you know, and then the transaction itself. Yeah, so Finland was, um, in 2017, we were advised it's good to have Scandinavian projects. However, uh, subsequent uh, market meant that we could get the company uh, public uh, with Slovakia alone. And correctly, the PRS board decided that the Finnish assets were too early stage. There were, in fact, other assets in Finland that we've since dropped, such as Yolmavara in the north and Saxjavi in the south, copper nickel projects. Uh, so these are the result of, um, yeah, Possibly Bambra, the the which is the company that we're um, transacting with, uh, that that could have been a standalone company. However, in terms of management time and benefit to PRS shareholders, I uh, was my PRS hat on because I'm also a Bambra shareholder. This had to be reviewed independently by our independent directors, John Levings, uh, Steve Gemmel, Peter Nightingale, and basically they um, designed a transaction that in overall uh, equity size for PRS shareholders represents about 1% of the, the equity of PRS, which is acceptable to Bambra uh, shareholders being six of them in that we recognise that we will recover that value with draw results. So uh, it basically, it's a very friendly transaction um, and a very soft transaction in terms of size, but that reflects the, the, the fact that we had some common directors and we wanted to uh, make sure that all uh, shareholders of PRS and Bambra were getting a fair independent view on it. And what I can see is draw results straight away mean that um, the Bambra shareholders, who in the end will hold PRS script, uh, will, will, we're all sharing the risk and the reward together. So it's quite a, a normal transaction of putting um, uh, money into the ground and then shares at the back end uh, less than to, um, over two hundred fifty thousand worth. So it's quite a quite a benign transaction. Aiden. Great, thanks, Jason. We've time for a couple of more questions. So type them in the chat and uh, I'll get to them. We got one just on the Frankfurt listing. Uh, the rationale there. What do you think it brings to to uh, prospect and and the current shareholders? Well, one thing it brings is I don't have to when I present the project to potential shareholders in Frankfurt, Zurich or whatever, I don't have to talk about geopolitics uh, or jurisdiction. We can just talk about the asset. And there is a, a deep um, pool of EU investors who are interested in being in, involved in this exploration stage. They're not necessarily interested anymore on investing, generalizing, investing through the London Exchange. And one nuance that escapes people is that, yes, of course, ASX listed only companies have central or German investors, but they're a, an elite, um, very small group of wholesale investors, uh, as whereas we want to be involved to the full market. And that involves 
um, people on the buy side uh, in their own jurisdiction, which they're comfortable with. And so we can't see the downside really, um, particularly when you've got a, a family offices, for example, recently making decisions in Germany of investing through Frankfurt only. And um, I think that uh, any company operating in the EU should have a, the ability for retail and wholesale EU investors to trade the fully fungible stock, by the way, with the ASX. They should be able to trade their stock uh, while they're awake. And um, that that's compelling for me is creating demand for PRS stock. And um, that's my role in a way. Also, it makes our job a lot easier in future fundraising uh, initiatives, including um, potential uh, government groups investing in the company once we get more advanced. So I, I think it's uh, it's got very limited downside. It's a, it's a uh, logical step to take for an EU operator. Great, Jason, just conscious of time, the 30 minutes is up. Maybe just provide, give you the opportunity to um, outline to the participants on the call the, the key items of news flow to, to potentially look out for over the next sort of, you know, six, 12 months. You know, what are the big ticket items that, that's going to move the needle? Yeah, so, of course, values from drill results. So we're drilling shortly at Kolba and we're sampling drilling in Finland but for both Korsnas and Jockey Kangas. And so therefore, potentially we're drilling a Pukinech gold silver project that that's subject to debate. Uh, but we know um, that's our job is to drill targets and carefully select a target. So anyway, drilling results, my view is um, it should be uh, in April, um, mid-April, we're drilling coal by We're just getting a rig organized subject. Obviously we had to complete our fundraising. So good thing is there's rigs available. So yeah, I guess the, the one comment there, Aiden, to cap off is drill results um, visually from April onwards and then chemically from the lab from probably early May onwards. Excellent. Thank you, Jason. And thank you everyone else for uh, dialing in. Um, I think that was an excellent run through, good questions. Um, we're pretty excited here at NWR to be involved uh, with the prospect story now and communicating it to the market. I think it's clear we've a, a lot of messaging to get out there in the next 12 months. And it's, it's gonna be a, a very, very active period on the ground in Slovakia and Finland. And hopefully that translates uh, to uh, stock market activity here as well. Thanks, Jason. Uh, gonna be a very exciting year ahead for you. Thank you, Aiden, and thank you for everyone for attending.